So we have filled the last six sections over here. You can see I've got my blue painters tape still on the edges. Again, uh, taped off the top. Um, filled the seams, proud of the deck, just like I did on all of these, and then peeled my tape off. On the back, I taped all of this off again, and I took 80 grit and I just ran it down the white lines to rough it up. And then I did a second, second coat, second application, and hopefully you can see they are just proud of the deck right now. So uh, we'll know pretty quick which method's gonna work out better. So what I have done, you can see this is all kind of light and dark and splotchy. I hit this with my 80 uh, random orbital sander and 80 grit and took it down flush. It sanded very, very easy. It took me about five minutes to sand this, this entire section flush. Sanded really quick, like, like I had expected to. So here's the dilemma. If you look closely, you can see that there are little air bubbles, little craters that I have sanded down into. Now I expected this to happen. You can see them there. So much like the back over here, I'm going to have to mask these off and do one more fill proud of the deck and again sand it flush so there's regardless it would appear which method you go you're gonna have to do two coats surprisingly I'm kinda leaning towards thinking this might produce a better looking seam um, with the added step that you you have to take sandpaper and sand that that first application of the fairing compound wipe it down and then apply it again this actually may produce better seams. Um, we'll know more when I get this sanded flush. If I end up getting the little tiny bubbles in this, like I did up here, well then this is a faster method. Um, but again, I'm, I'm not after fast, I'm after the, the best quality, and I don't care how long it takes. So when I get this sanded up, and that cures and I get it sanded up, I will then know, and I'll let you know, which method we're going to continue with on the bow and, and what produced a better looking stripe. But that's where we are. All right, well, we now have the very first fill of the stripes, the, the deck seams on the bow. Very first fill. Uh, hopefully you can see it is concave on each one. It's kind of difficult to see, but they are slightly concave. So I did after mulling it over and thinking and thinking and thinking, which way am I going to do here on the bow? I kind of did a hybrid of the two. Um, so I taped, taped all my seams off up here. In fact, you can still see, you know, the tape basically acting as a dam on the edge of the, the end grain there. But anyhow, I taped all the seams off just like I did on the bridge deck, just like I did on the rear deck. Um, I mixed up my, my filler mixture, filled the seam, squeegeed it off flush, to the deck just like I did on the rear half but then I went a step farther and I took the edge of this the little half round stuck it in there and drug that down the seam to create a concave a consistent concave on every seam so they're all slightly slightly below the deck you can see where the tape wasn't you can see little little spots of uh, epoxy here and there there's some down the middle that doesn't matter again because all of this is getting sanded but I think doing it this way and, and using the little edge of this to produce a uniform concave on each one of the seams, I think will produce a better second fill on the deck seams. Um, so that's where we are. I'm really happy with the color. It turned out great. I'm really happy with, with the method I used. Oh, that thing is so pretty. So pretty. Very, very happy. And again, you know, it's a nice, smooth, fair curve out here. It doesn't look jerky or weird. Same with this side. So it looks like our seam sanding was accurate. Um, just really, really pretty. So that's where we are. Let this cure up. Um, mask everything off again. Lightly 80 grit the seams. Um, wipe it down with alcohol and put on the second coat. And on the second coat, exactly like the rear deck i'll fill it just proud of the the, uh, the deck and i'll squeegee it off but not quite flush i'll just let them stick up a hair bit and then peel my tape and then sand everything flush and whom bam so that's where we are making fan fantastic progress oh it looks awesome it looks really awesome 
I'm paying no attention to this little wobble right here. Remember, this is below the deck, so when I fill it all the way up and then sand it flush, they'll be perfect lines. Looking effing beautiful. So, we now have the bow area all taped off again. We're getting ready to apply the second coat. They're all sanded and ready to go. And on the second tape, you can see I've left about a 30 second of wood exposed. On the second application, I'm not near as, as tight with my tolerances on the taping because I want that to spread out, you know, and, and fully fill that, that uh, seam clear up at the top. So again, I left a little more gap than normal on all my tape, but we're all taped off, getting ready to apply the next coat. So the second coat is now on. The tape has been peeled. The stuff is still really, really soft. You can see the lines are all jagged and, and ugly looking. But what's important, and hopefully she'll focus, you can see they're all proud of the deck. They're all sticking up just a little bit. So this is the second fill. And all of the focus, there we go. So all of the deck seams now are proud of the deck. Yeah, about a 16th or so. Um, happy with the turnout. That's where we are. So we're gonna let it cure. And uh, then we'll sand them all back and see how they look. I should be able to sand the entire deck now. I've got it partially sanded. But What I'm most curious to see is if these are gonna sink in at all or stay proud of the deck like they are. Hopefully they stay proud. We should be done filling seams then, with the exception of maybe some tiny little spots, you know, maybe here and there, but the majority of it should be done. So this is my mess of a mix table. Um, obviously, I got micro balloons and gloves and cups and sticks and all of that crap up here and a big old mess of micro balloons all over the place. But, so I've ordered all, all of my deck striping or fill work, I've been using Glen Epoxy Shield. That's the same epoxy that I, I use to encapsulate everything in, everything on the boat. It's kind of thin epoxy. Um, not quite water thin, but, but close. Anyhow, so I've ordered, I, I don't know, I can't remember, it's three, four, I might even be on my fifth gallon now, four or five gallons of this stuff. And up until my recent order that arrived here a week or two ago, uh, it's always been a fairly light color. The resin itself, uh, about, if you can imagine honey, kind of that amber color, but half that dark. That's about what color the resin generally has been. This last gallon that showed up a couple weeks ago was noticeably darker. I mean, substantially darker. And immediately, as soon as I poured that resin in the cup, I went, uh-oh, you know, this isn't good because I'm mixing my white micro balloons with it, if it's darker, you know, it's, it's gonna produce a different shade of stripe. So what I did was I started mixing, um, you know, I mix the epoxy at the, the appropriate ratio. I started mixing in micro balloons and on all the rear seams I was doing, you know, 50% epoxy, 50% micro balloons to get a nice, a nice bright white. Well, I mixed 50% in with the new darker resin and it was it was noticeably darker than that and i went oh crap so again i added more micro balloons and it's still not bright white enough and added more micro balloons and more and before you know it i, I basically turned the epoxy into a putty that was so thick you couldn't use it and it still was not bright enough to match the rear stripes and i'm going oh crap now what do i do you know so i had heard that you could thin epoxy. Um, depending on the brand, you can thin it, you know, five to 10% without even hurting it uh, structurally. You know, you can thin it down. And everybody has stated that denatured alcohol is what they recommend to thin epoxy with. Well, I happen to have some. So again, five to 10% you can supposedly, you can thin epoxy without affecting its structural ability. Well. Number one, this isn't structural, it's just a filler. So it gets better than that. If you're not using the epoxy as a, you know, a, for structural purposes, you can thin the epoxy up to 25%. So that's what I did. I, I mixed three ounces of the dark, dark Glenelg epoxy shield, and I added an ounce 
of denatured alcohol and that made it basically water thin. So we're looking at four ounces. At that point, I had to add 10 ounces of my micro balloons to get a white enough color that, that matched. So <laughs> I'm no longer at 50-50, you know, as far as epoxy and micro balloons. I'm closer to, uh, oh geez, 30-70. <laughs> you know? There's not a lot of epoxy in this mix, which makes it even easier to sand. Is it going to affect it in any way? You know, if, if this were structural, if I were attempting to glue something with this, I might worry. Uh, but because it's just a filler, we're just filling seams, I didn't worry a bit about it. But I had to change, you know, midway through my stripes, how I mixed it, the ratios I mixed it at. And I had to thin the crap out of the epoxy just to be able to add enough of the white micro balloons to get the color right. I mean, it was, it was actually kind of surprising. So, a bit of a nightmare, but uh, I really don't foresee it being any kind of an issue anyhow. So, as soon as this stuff cures up, again, we're still proud of the deck. As soon as it cures up in a day or two, we'll get it all sanded flush, sand the entire deck flush. And if any spots, again, need, need touched up, we'll add little spot fills and sand it. But I'm really hoping that by next weekend I can get a, a coat over the top of everything. Making good progress. All right, well, I have done a rough sand on the entire bow, both sides. And then tonight I started finish sanding from basically the center line to the uh, starboard side. So this stuff is pretty much dead flush. And I'm, I'm taking it pretty much back to bare wood, um, just so everything's as flush as I can possibly make it. I am very, very happy with the lines and how they turned out. Um, I think so far in this entire front half of the deck, there might be one pinhole I have to come and just put a little blob on and touch up, but this definitely produced the best looking stripes. The lines are just absolutely flawless. I am very, very happy with how it turned out. So I've got basically the starboard bow all sanded and half of the king plank the cover boards uh, all the way around. I've got the bridge deck up to the halfway point. You can see the darker spot over here. This is all pretty much done and then I'm starting right here. So I'll get this half finished and then we'll move to the uh, port or the left side and do the same thing. Get everything to about this point and then I'll probably do one more final once over. Um, you can see there's a little dark spot in here. This probably needs a little bit more, but get everything Pretty well sanded all the way back, not quite, but really close to all the way back to bare wood to produce the, the flattest surface possible. And then we'll get some epoxy on this thing. So pretty. Look at that. Oh, I think, I think this is the way to go as far as seam filling. If you're gonna use epoxy and micro balloons, making fan damn -tastic progress. Well, it's official. This is by far the better way to go to fill the deck stripes if you're going to use epoxy and micro balloons. Um, and I'll show you why. As you can see, all of these are now, if I can get it to focus, sanded concave below the surface. Um, so I've done this half of the bridge deck. Basically, I clamp my little straight edge on here and I use a real thin piece of eighth inch ply with some 80 grit wrapped around it tied up against that straight edge and just sand back and forth till I get a, a concave in each one of these seams. I decided to second fill these actually third fill now these seams and I'll show you why. So if you remember these were the ones that I, I overfilled and then sanded back flush and it left the little tiny pinholes. Well I came back and I filled those pinholes but that was that first batch of the dark epoxy and uh, when I filled all those pinholes of course it, it flushed up really nice problem is see them those are the pinholes they're a different shade than the stripe themselves and it just looks crappy we'll go over to this one Hopefully, if I can get in there without 
lined in it. This is the easiest one to see. You should be able to see those. So you see all the little pinholes or air bubbles that I filled, they're a different color. And it just looks like crap. And I tried and tried and tried to talk myself into, ah, nobody will ever notice. Eventually I just had to smack myself and say, hey, that's half ass. And we are so close to the finish line now, there's just no way that I'm gonna half ass this. Again, I haven't half assed anything on the entire boat build. I'm not about to start now. It would be incredibly dumb to work this hard for this long and then just give a less than perfect seam, just give it a pass because I you know, want to get it in the water. That's horse shit. This is only going to set me back you know, a day or so to sand them all out. It took me about an hour to sand this side, so about an hour to sand this side. I'll tape these off, mix up micro balloons, fill it just proud of the deck, you know, wipe them, but leave them about a sixteenth off the deck, sand everything flush. That's going to completely el eliminate these little pinholes, and, uh, and it'll be perfect. It'll look just like the bow. It'll look just like the rear of the boat. So, filling the seams way high of the deck, sanding them flush, bad idea. It creates a bunch of extra work. Now, had the epoxy had, had it been the right color, or I had realized that I needed to thin it before filling all these, it might have been okay. You might have got the color so close nobody would see. But uh, that's not going to work. So we're sanding them. We're going to refill them. It's going to set me back, you know, a day or so. I might not even make my goal this month, but it's the right way to do it. I am not going to cut corners. I am not going to half-ass, and I am not going to settle for okay. So making good progress, I think. Now here is an after look after I have refilled those and uh, hopefully it'll focus really clearly. After I've refilled them and then sanded them back flush, the little light and dark spots that were there, those are completely gone now. So uh, come on baby, focus. So I've got this half sanded back to flush. And just to test, just because, you know, I'm sure there's people out there who wanted to know, I decided to fill these without masking the deck off at all on bare wood. And here's a look at the other side. And this is, you know, this is the reason I actually coated the entire deck in two coats of epoxy prior to doing the stripe work was because I was afraid that maybe that epoxy would bleed out into the edges of the wood and, you know, leave a fuzzy looking seam, but it looks beautiful. Come on, focus. I mean, just crisp, nice, beautiful edges on bare wood. So maybe I didn't have to do two coats on the entire deck prior to striping, but I did. But anyhow, just for your guys' information, that's where we're at. So now I'm getting ready to sand down this side. That looks a whole heck of a lot better. I, I, can, I can go to sleep and not feel bad about leaving the old stripes in here with the different colored air bubbles that were filled. So, Making good progress. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. All right. It is officially February 1st, 2018. For the month of January 2018, we went up 22 and 3 quarters hours. So again, not bad hours. Um... All of that was in the epoxy coat, the uh, 22 and 3 quarters hours up here in the epoxy coat. So that brings us up to 117 and a quarter hours into epoxy, which is now by far the largest hours of any section of the boat. And again, like I stated last month, I'm counting all of the seam filling as epoxy coat work. I mean, it's not coating, but it is epoxy work. So 117 and a quarter. We went up $258.74 this month. And that was on another gallon of Glen L Poxy Shield. That was on uh, sandpaper, mix cups, um, pastry bags, you know, all that kind of stuff. So anyhow, uh, that brings us up to a total of hours into the zip of 917 and a quarter. So we have cracked the 900 hour mark. Uh, again, way past what I thought I was going to be, even on the high side, but... Um, 
it's no surprise I've pretty well missed every target I've ever set on this boat, so no surprise there. And uh, the $258.74, that brings us up to $9,686.61 invested. So uh, we'll take a look. We'll see where we're at. So we'll peel this guy back here. And here's where we are. Uh, doesn't look a whole lot different than where we were. With the exception of now you can see I've gone in and filled a couple of little spots. They're just tiny little pinholes, miscellaneous places on the deck. Um, I believe there were three. One there and a couple over here on the bridge deck. Uh, the outside of the shear line is all masked off and I am sanded down to the tape all the way around the outside of the boat. I've also masked off the uh, seat backs, both front and rear, and sanded down to the tape on those. Um, this interior edge is all sanded and ready to go. So uh, this stuff should be hardened up, although I haven't checked it yet today. Should be hardened up and I'll hit the entire surface again with the 80 grit on the RO. One last time, I'll go over the whole thing. And we are, we're ready now for encapsulation coats to completely coat the deck, both the seams and the deck. Um, should be really, really pretty. And, and uh, again, I should have no issue whatsoever doing that, uh, getting at least two coats, maybe three, depending on how the second one turns out, three uh, coats on the entire top deck. Again, that's going to be the Glen Epoxy Shield. Um, so... I have 100% decided to automotive clear coat the entire top deck and the outsides of the boat. That's kind of what I had in mind originally uh, from the start when I first started contemplating what to do as a, a final coat was automotive clear coat, kind of the direction I was leaning. Um, I'm, I'm basically 99.9% .9 sold on it. I'm pretty positive that's what's going to happen. So I'll get a couple coats on this, uh, at least two. And, you know, uh, let this sit. It's got to sit probably a month or so before it goes in for auto clear, just to make sure it's done gassing out any, you know, if it is. But, uh, so that's where we're at. Um, got a whole bunch of deck hardware I'm getting ready to order. Uh, should have, should have it this month if everything goes according to plan anyhow. Um, my cleats, um, the... Let's see, stern light, bow light, um, there should be some bow chocks, some stainless bow chocks for up here. The fuel fill, uh, windshield brackets for, or, or frames, I call them brackets, but basically the last little bits of the stainless goodies for the deck to finish it off. Uh, and I want to get all of those fit on here and done before it goes out to clear then i'll pull them all off ship it out to clear so that all the fit work and you know any nicks or scratches i may put in it won't matter because it'll be sanded and under clear coat i still have to do my motor well drains and i have to order those bulkheads i have to drill a hole out here on the outside of the hull um, and do another stainless through hole fitting for the vent breather for my fuel tank so there's still a little bit of work to do but we are on the home stretch. I uh, just want to say thank you to everybody who gave me a thumbs down on the last video. That was hilarious. Some of the comments were fantastic. I, I could not stop laughing. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, you can let that go now. <laughs> the thumbs down fun's over. Uh, so feel free to rate this video however you'd like. Um, but I appreciate it again. Some, some hilarious comments. It was a good time. So I appreciate that, guys. Um, one one thing I wanted to state at the you know in this video was one particular guy you know was stating that that he had always thought that you know these boats were done with varnish and then Sikaflex seams or some sort of seam filler and he was surprised that wow I had no idea it was done this way I want to state for the record it's not done this way <laughs> I'm no professional boat builder I don't know what the hell I'm doing you know. This could be a giant mistake. This is not traditional. This is not how these boats traditionally were made. Uh, this is not how they were traditionally seam filled or striped. You know, this is not normal. So <laughs> for that fellow out there who was, you know, surprised that this is how it's done, this isn't how it's done. 
again, I'm, I'm no pro boat builder. I don't know. You know, I'm just making this up on the fly as I go. Yes, I have researched it. Yes, other people have done this. But again, it's, it's not common. It's not the traditional way that these, you know, boats were built. But anyhow, I just wanted to get that straight. So don't take anything I say as the gospel. You know, again, I'm, I'm an amateur here. I'm a complete amateur, newbie. Um, so what I'm doing could be a gigantic mistake. Hell, maybe this will fail in three years. And, you know, you never know. But anyhow, again, thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to rate, and this time, however you, you choose. Uh, comment. Subscribe again if you haven't already, and we'll catch you guys on the next update of Building the Zip.